Okay, guys, I'm going to go over this with you on this rowdy I buy power um, car that I sold that's been returned. Uh, it, it came off the base uh, during shipping, and so I <laughs> um, I just opened up the box and, and pulled it out, and this is what we've got, okay, and just assessing it, right, and see what happened. First thing first, I was under the recollection and memory that I had used um, <clears throat> that I had used this product to attach the car um, back together. Uh, that is not the case. Um, I used JB Weld. And I did it the way that I normally do. And you can see I even added a little bit here and here uh, to keep these in place. So what I do is I put some JB Weld here and on these posts, right? And then I um, put the car back together. And I did that. Uh, but it broke loose. You can see uh, this is where it, it fell apart. So I did use JB Weld. Uh, not the shoe goo. So I was I was kind of slamming the shoe goo in my last video a week or two ago, and that's not the case. So uh, it was it was the um, it was the JB Weld, and I just see something here that I don't like, so I'm just gonna scrape it off. Um, anyways, so what I'm gonna do is obviously I'm going to put all this back together and clean it up a little bit. I'm looking it over. It doesn't look that bad at all. Um, it's got the standard nicks on the spoilers, on the you know here, on the roof lines. I can clean that up. That's just black paint, right? Um, I don't see any of the decal uh, that's messed up. Um, you know, I can go around the lower valence here. A little spot here but other than that obviously I'll clean it up I got my fingerprints on it and stuff like that and maybe he did too but all in all it it doesn't look bad and I'll be able to clean that up and, and, and resell it um, so this is the inside and yeah you know, and I don't expect this to hold right so I just put a little glue here uh, just to keep it in place uh, as I reassemble it and so um, I'll be able to put that back together. So on this, right, so this obviously is loose. And um, and so underneath here, my little wire job, and, and, and maybe, uh, and, I, and I just cut it, right? It was, it, this was connected here, and I just cut it with my scissors. And I said, hey, maybe I should film this before I get too far. But anyways, um, so this, this was uh, one of the, the connections was broken. Um, and maybe that happened afterwards. Uh, hard to say. Um, it's possible that, that one of these did break, which allowed it to move a little bit more during shipping, and then that caused a little bit more motion uh, to, um, uh, to make it fail altogether. But I think my best course of action here is to is to use these packing peanuts and that was actually he, he commented uh, the, the the gentleman that I I sent the the new one to and a, an additional one um, he commented he said hey you know I, I think your packing peanut um, solution is the best thing because uh, like let me let me kind of reassemble this as a way that I'll show you if, if you haven't seen my other video but um, All right, get in there. So I put this back like this. <coughs> this is all back together, right? I put the packing peanut on top and then I take my, my cover here and I put it on like that. So that way, you know, there's no movement whatsoever of the car. There's no open space for that car to move around. 
and any forces, right? It, it, it's all one piece, right? There's no moving or potential uh, for things to move. Um, maybe sideways, but that would be pretty crazy, to be honest with you. Um, so, uh, good news uh, that that is something that I can do. So, um, definitely going to be using these packing peanuts as much as possible. And, uh, yeah. So, as you might imagine, you know, this, this uh, case here uh, kind of took a beating. You can see, you know, if I get a nice little clean background here, you can see some of the marks uh, here, uh, black paint. And I'll, I'll clean it up as best as I can. There is a, a crack here. See that? That's pretty crazy. Something hit there pretty hard. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, I might just chuck this case all together because, you know, who's going to want that? But yeah, so my, my takeaway is not necessarily a, a, a nail against the, uh, the Shugu, uh, really, or the JB weld, right? I, I've, I've, uh, I don't think it's the JB weld that, uh, that is the problem. I, I think it's, it's just using these packing peanuts. Uh, to securely get that car in the in the case and I think we'll be good there so yeah that's my that's my assessment of this uh, of this failed job now I will say one thing while I'm talking about this is working on these next-gen cars is a pain in the backside when it comes to wiring up underneath here um, and the reason is you know, I have to strip. I have to strip the uh, the sheathing of the wire because it's too. There's there's no tolerance there. It's too um, it's too tight between the wheels and the um, the body here. It's just too tight. And so, trying to wire this around these uh, these uh, tires and the axles there to get everything in place is just a it's it's a pain in the butt, and so um, if you guys are doing this, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a problem. So, anyways, I'm gonna clean this up and get to work on that. Um, update: I, I still don't have any uh, heat yet. The guy came this morning and and assessed my problem as a bad control board. So. Yeah, let's go over there for a second. Hold on. Yeah, so um, changing topics here on you. <laughs> Having fun, right? Just sharing everything I got going on. So here's my uh, here's my uh, my furnace, right, at the bottom part. And uh, he said, uh, hey, your gas valve is not getting 24 volts. So the diagnosis is to replace the control board. As you can see, uh, there's the control board. Um, and... Yeah, of course they don't make them anymore. This thing is about 20 years old. Estimate to replace the control board was $740. And they can do it tomorrow. And I said, eh, no, that's, that's way too much. So I'm in the process of buying a replacement control board. And if Amazon works out, I can get it tomorrow and I can put it in myself. So, you know, I mean, these are just... These are just little, you know, connectors, uh, so it's not too hard to, you know, uh, take it off and put it on the new board and then swap the board out. So uh, you guys that are HVAC, uh, you know, guys or anybody that's really done any electrical uh, circuit board work, control board work, uh, it's pretty easy. Um, obviously, I just need to make sure everything's clean, and I go step by step, and I'll do that, so... Hopefully, this thing will be at, up and running tomorrow, and I can get back to work full-time with my hobby during this uh, Christmas and New Year's break. So, fun times, guys. Uh, appreciate the comments very much on my last videos. Very helpful. And, um, and yeah, uh, the one gentleman that mentioned about, you know, hey, you know, maybe heat up your, your control valve and it'll, it'll break loose. Well, I pointed my heater right at it. Got it really warm. I mean, I could barely touch it. It was so warm. And nothing, right? So that, that, that 
kind of put a little doubt in my mind that that was my problem. And then when the guy diagnosed it, and the diagnostic fee was like $105. You know, whatever. You know, it is what it is. Um, that made sense then, right? So if it's a bad control board, the gas valve is still good. And I just replace that and we'll be good to go. So that's my plan. I'll let you know how it turns out. Should be fun. All right, guys. God bless. Take care.